Hey guys, welcome to the next video on Python tutorial for beginners. Now before starting our object oriented programming journey in Python, let's discuss about what is the difference between the procedural programming and the object oriented programming. So you will have the better idea why we use object oriented programming. Now traditional programming languages such as C or Pascal were called procedural programming languages or structural programming languages where the basic unit was functions. Now programming in these type of procedural languages involves choosing a data structure and then designing the algorithm and then translating that algorithm into a code. So if this sounds a little bit confusing, let me try to explain it with an example. So let's say you have been given a task to create a program for a passenger who wants to travel from one place to the another place using a cab service. So if we think from the point of view of procedural programming, what we do in the procedural programming is we create some global data structure which holds the data. So here, for example, we create some kind of data structure which can hold the data. For example, in case of a cab service, uh, which cab service is it or which type of cab is it and at what location this cab is standing. All these kind of data we store in a data structure in a global environment. Now after storing the data, we design an algorithm. So let's see what kind of algorithm we can develop in the procedural programming language for our cab booking service. So this is a pseudo code which I have written. So first of all, the passenger will open the app from which he can book a cab and then he will book the cab and once the cab is booked, he will wait for the cab and then once cab arrives, he will sit in the cab and then he will reach to his or her destination and at the end, he will pay the fare of the cab. And this is the pseudo code of that algorithm and then we will translate this algorithm into actual code in procedural programming language. Now in these type of procedural programming languages, we concentrate on creating the functions and the major drawback of uh, using these functions is that data and operations on the data are separated. That means we need a methodology to send this data to these functions. So here we need to send this data which we have saved globally into these functions and these functions take this data either as argument or as a global variable and then perform some actions on this data and give you some result. Now these kind of functions are passive. What do I mean by passive here? That is these kind of function cannot hold any information inside them. So once you give the data, they are able to give you the result back after performing some operations, but they cannot save or hold the state or the data so that if you want to use that data in some other place in your code, then it will be very difficult using these kind of functions which you use in procedural programming. Now let's look at the object oriented approach of doing things. So in object oriented programming languages like C++ or Java or Python, the basic unit is class. Now if we take the same example of a passenger who wants to travel from one place to another using a cab service, using object oriented programming thinking, which depends upon the creation of object, we can create different kind of object. For example, for a cab, we can create a class called cab, and then we can create a class for cab driver, and the third class we can create for a passenger. Okay, so a class you can create for any real life object. It can be a car, it can be a motorbike, it can be a book 
or employee or a person. So object oriented programming allows us to create object. So first of all, what is a class? So a class refers to a blueprint in which we can have data and methods. Okay. So for example, for our cab class, what attributes this cab class can have? For example, a cab service, which cab service we want to take? What is the make of the cab? It, is it a Toyota or a BMW or a Volkswagen cab? At which location this cab is right now? What is the number plate of that cab? So the passenger can recognize this cab. So all these uh, things which I have written here are called data because they can hold some kind of data. Number plate has number plate data. Location have geolocation data. Make have the make data. Cab service can have uh, data like uh, Uber or any other cab service. And the other thing which a class can have are called method. So earlier we have seen that we can create functions and when these functions you use inside a class, they are called method. Okay, so functions inside a class are called method. Now the data inside this object or class is called attributes or the member variables which can hold some data. And using this class, we can create object of the cab class, which means we can create different object using a same class. And how to create object using classes, we will see in the next video in the real life example. So don't worry if you don't understand how these things work. I will give you a real life example so you will be able to understand in a better way. Now what is an object? An object is a software unit that combines data and methods. Okay, so we have this data here and then we have the methods inside the class and object is able to combine both of them, which is data with the methods. Now these objects, for example, a cab object and the passenger object can exchange the data between them also. So data is interchangeable between for example, the passenger object and a cab object. So let's rewind once again what we have learned about object oriented programming. So the basic unit in object oriented programming is a class and a class refers to a blueprint which can have the data and methods. Now using a class, we can create objects. And what is an object? object is an instance of a class and each object can have its own data and method and an object is able to store the state of some kind so at which location this cab is right now so this is a state and an object is able to store that state now in procedural programming if you remember there is no relation between the data and the method right we need to provide the data to the method which are separate entities in the procedural programming language now these data members are called attributes or member variables and these functions which you define inside a class are called methods and what are some of the key differences between procedural programming language and object oriented programming language. The first is the unit in procedural programming language is function. And on the other hand, in object oriented programming, the unit is class. The second is the procedural programming concentrate on creating functions. While object oriented programming starts from isolating classes and then they can have data and methods inside it. In procedural programming language, the data and the functions are separate. And in object oriented programming language, data and methods are not separate. They are the part of a single object of a class. Now, if all this seems to be a little confusing to you, don't worry, you are not alone. And I will try to solve this confusion in the next video in which I will tell you how to create the classes 
and how to use classes in Python. So stay tuned and please keep watching these videos. I will see you in the next video.